Hello, in this video, we're going to derive the mean, the variance, and the covariance of, of a quadratic form where we're not assuming any distributional form for the random variable. And what that means is we're just going to assume that our uh, mean of our vector is mu and that the variance covariance of our vector is sigma. Now, let's let A and B be n by n symmetric matrices and we want to show that the expected value of this quadratic form is equal to this where it's the trace of A times the variance covariance matrix and then this quadratic form. For the proof we give a note first. Now the generic or the you know when you want to find the uh, variance covariance matrix it, it's this. It's the expected value of this uh, vector product here. And if we multiply this through, we get this. And then when we take that um, expectation through, you know, this is mu minus mu prime, and this is mu mu prime, and there's one here, so one of those cancel, and we're left with this. But the reason we do that is I want this, a, a formula for this piece. So if we if we add that to the other side, then, then we get the expected value of x, x prime is equal to sigma plus mu, mu prime. Now, <coughs> the so now back to the proof, the expected value of this. Now, this is a number. And so if you take the trace, it actually doesn't change it. And the trace can be brought through the expectation here. But one of the nice properties of trace is that we can, we can rearrange these in a way that makes multiplication appropriate. And we also have to do it in a way that, you know, makes sense, that the trace is unchanged when we manipulate. So if we take this X and move it to the back side, these two quantities are the same. Now, now when we take the expectation back through, then you know the, the a is a constant, so it goes to this x x prime. But the value of this is this quantity, so we can replace it with uh, sigma plus mu mu prime, and then distribute the a, and so we get this: the trace of a times sigma times the trace of this but again we can rearrange these around and we can move this mu prime back to the front and we get this and we're actually finished although for some reason I left the trace on this is a number so the trace of a number is it's unchanged so we can take the trace off of this and we can actually, then we get the original. Not sure why I left that on there. Now, when we calculate the variance and covariance, we'll need use of the chronic or product. And I have a video called the chronic or product if you want to review some of the properties of it. We're going to calculate the covariance first of, of these two, the covariance between these two quadratic forms. And it equals this long... Uh, formula here and we're going to give an example at the end of this of, of how to use this and let's look at this the proof is um, oh we have a note first I want to find a generic formula for this so the expected value of the product of these two quadratic forms well this is a number it's a one by one matrix it's a scalar so if we take the trace of it, it doesn't change it. We take the trace inside, and it's unchanged. But the beauty of the trace of two numbers, so this is a scalar and this is a scalar, it's actually equivalent to the chronic or product of two numbers. So this is the same. But we have the product of three vec you know, two vectors in a matrix, and one of the properties of the chronic or product is we can split it like this. Now, the trace allows us to manipulate these in here. So if we take this matrix to the back, then we get this. 
now we oh yeah we get this now now we're going to kind of reverse what we did going from here to here this is the chronic or product um, we can uh, combine these two into this we left it like this now the trace and the expectation can be interchanged but a and b is a constant in regards to the expectation so it can come out front like this and then we just have the expected value of this uh, chronic or product here now that is a generic form for this is this so now when we look at the uh, covariance between these two quantities the formula is it's expected value of the product of these two minus the mean of those two which is this now if if we use this result here and then plug in number one for the mean of the quadratic form we actually we get this result so it follows now the variance of a quadratic form is this quantity and we get that by default from the number two because the variance of this quadratic form is actually the covariance of this quadratic form and then we just plug in what we have from the number two and the result follows so let's do an example of how this can be used so let's let x be i'm just going to you know leave the vector notation or the you know the vinculum above it of you know to represent a multivariate normal with k dimension so this is a vector of k um, where x is of course you know these components and we want to find the expected value and the variance of this quantity so now really we can leave off the i so it's expected value of x prime x but i put that in there to illustrate that it is a quadratic form and we can use the results that we just derived so th things we know a few notes before we start since this is multivariate normal each one of those uh, the marginal is normal with the mean zero and variant one so if we square each one of those it's a chi-squared and if we sum the square of each of those components a chi-squared with k degrees of freedom but this sum as we know can be thought of as this vector product so that tells us since this quantity let's call it y is the chi squared with k degrees of freedom the expected value of y is k and the variance of y is 2k and one more result before we jump into the to the finding the generic mean and variance of these quadratics is this uh, notation here so if we have the expected value of xi squared times xj squared now remember each of those are standard normal distributions now when the when i and j are equal that's expected value of xi to the fourth which is three and when they're separate they're independent so you can look at them individually this the expected value that's one expected value of that one so one times one is one and i have two videos out that would illustrate these you know this proof here but um this one here we we should get you know this is this is a chi-square distribution with k degrees of freedom so this should equal k and this variance should equal 2k when we're finished so let's look at that so the expected value of this is the trace of a which is i times the variance covariance matrix which is i plus the mean times the um I already forgot what it was so a which is i and then the mean so those are zero because the mean is, we're assuming it's a standard normal or a multivariate normal with mean zero and this is a k-dimensional identity matrix times that k-dimensional identity matrix so it's i and the trace is the sum of the diagonals which is k and so that's k so the expected value is k so we got one of them right so now let's look at the variance and the formula from uh, number three above is this, okay? 
And even though I didn't, I didn't have to write this out because we know it's zero, but I did just to show you that the formula is true. Now this piece here, we actually just kind of went through that this is K, so it's K squared. Now this thing um, here, I uh, cross I's, where that's the chronic or product, that's another identity matrix. So this identity matrix times this, you just get this back. So we go down to here. So this piece is K squared, and then we have the trace of the expected value of this. Now let's, um, let's expand this one on the next page. So it's a chronic of product. So what, this, what I'm going to do is kind of write this matrix out and then take this times each of the elements of this matrix. And, oh, sorry for all the flipping. Um, so then we're going to take the expected value and the trace. So really, since it's the trace, we only need the diagonal elements of this. So I'm going to uh, take a shortcut and not write all the elements of that matrix. So we have the minus k squareds carried over. We have the trace and the expected value. And the x times x prime is this piece here. So if we were to write that matrix out, this is what we would get. And then since it's chronic or product, we take this times each of those components, those elements. And then the, uh, now this, now ultimately we just need the diagonal elements. So this again is, you know, the diagonal elements of this is x11, x22, x33, all the way to xkk. So you get x11 times each of those diagonal elements. Then you get x2 times each of those diagonal elements, and so forth. So the expected value is, here there's only one case where it's uh, x1, x1 to the fourth, and then it's x1 squared times x2 squared, x1 squared times x3 squared, etc. And here there's only one time where it's x2 to the fourth, the rest are you know, the I and J are not the same, and it goes all the way down. So um, we can think of this like this. So then we take the trace of this, you know, but the expected value of each of those, right? So this is X1 times each one of those. So that's what this represents. So X1 squared times each one of those, and then it goes to X2 squared, times each one of these diagonal elements, and so forth. And so this piece, when i and j are the same, that's x to the fourth, and it's three. And that only happens k times, right? So it's k times three after you add them all up. And since the rest are one, and in total there's k squared things we're adding, but except for there's, you know, k of them are with the, or three and the rest are one, so it's one this many times. And then when we multiply this out, the one, the k squared cancel the minus k squared, we have three k minus k, and that's two k. And that's exactly what we should have gotten. The variance is two k. So, well anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks, bye.